Hi, welcome to Southland's Kids Zone. I'm so glad you joined us today for our lesson. What a great day to worship our Lord together. Come on, let's sing. priceless treasure God knows me, God hears me God is my comfort I am His and there's nothing better forgiven and chosen forever I am a treasure
for singing with me. How many of you like studying for a test or doing homework? <laughs> Sometimes schoolwork can be really hard and even if you study, you don't always make the grade you'd like to have. How would you feel if this paper got returned to you? An F is definitely not a grade you want to receive. Failing an assignment can make us feel upset or like we aren't good enough. Sometimes our teachers let us have a redo on assignments with bad grades. That means you get a second chance, another opportunity to do better. If this happened to you, wouldn't you take that opportunity? I would. Would you do it over just to get a better grade? What would your parents want you to do? Having a second chance can be a very good thing. It gives us the chance to right a wrong. In our Bible story today, Jonah got a second chance. He wasn't a student in school who made a bad grade, but he was a prophet studying under God. And he did fail an assignment given to him by God. Let's watch and see what happens. There was a prophet by the name of Jonah who was a messenger of God. One day, God told Jonah to go on a special journey to the great city of Nineveh. God wanted Jonah to go tell the people to stop sinning and obey God. This was a big task that made Jonah afraid. The people of Nineveh were the scariest people in the entire world. Jonah was so afraid that he made a foolish decision. Instead of obeying God, he ran away to the port city of Joppa that was in the opposite direction of Nineveh. Jonah hoped that God would forget and ask someone else to go. When Jonah arrived at the port city of Joppa, he found a ship that was going to sail to the city of Tarshish. Jonah thought this was a great idea, so he paid for his ticket, boarded the ship, and settled in for the long ride. How foolish Jonah was to think he could run away from God. While on the ship, a big storm broke loose. Everyone on board thought they were going to die. In an effort to lighten the load, the passengers started throwing cargo overboard. But nothing helped. The ship was tossed in the ocean, and the waves were getting bigger and bigger. All the sailors started praying to their gods. Finally, the captain came to Jonah and found him fast asleep below the deck of the ship. Angrily, he shook Jonah awake. What's going on, you lazy sleeper? Don't you care that the ship is about to sink? Hurry, get up here. Ask your God to make this storm stop. Jonah was in no praying mood. He knew that, because of his disobedience, God had sent the storm. Up on the deck, the sailors decided to cast lots to see whose fault this storm was. In the end, the lots all fell to Jonah. Jonah then told the sailors that he was running away from God. This made them even more afraid. Just throw me into the sea, Jonah told them. If you do, the sea will become calm. In the end, they did throw Jonah overboard. Jonah flew through the rain and wind and fell into the sea. Right away, the storm was over. Everything was peaceful. The sailors knew that Jonah's God was the true God, and they started worshiping him. As Jonah was sinking deeper into the dark water, a big fish appeared out of nowhere and swallowed him. Jonah was so afraid and thought he was going to die. But God had other plans. This was not the end of Jonah. Jonah found himself in the dark, squishy, stinky belly of this big fish. He would suffocate in here. Jonah had time to think and pray and get things right with God. He prayed and he knew that God would save him. For three days, Jonah stayed in that stinking fish's belly. After three days, the fish was done with Jonah. The fish threw up onto the shore, and Jonah went out with it. Here he was, stinky, 
lonely, and washed up on a faraway beach. But Jonah knew this time that he had to obey God. He had to go to Nineveh and tell them God's message. This time he went, but not with a good attitude. He was real grumpy and still a little scared. Even so, he told the people of Nineveh about God's message. Repent, he said. Repent, or you'll all die. Jonah was hoping that they wouldn't repent, and they would all die. He still didn't like these Ninevites. To Jonah's surprise, the people of Nineveh listened to God's message and became very sad over their wicked sin. For days they cried and prayed, asking God to have mercy on them. God listened to their prayers and forgave them. While sitting under the shade of a plant on a hill overlooking the city, Jonah hoped to see God destroy it. But it did not happen. When he learned that the people of Nineveh turned back to God, he was mad. So he complained to God. God had to continue teaching Jonah a lesson. God decided to take away the shade from that plant Jonah was sitting under. Now the sun was baking on Jonah's head. He was even more mad and grumpy. How can you do this? Jonah asked God. You send me all this way, and then you don't even punish these wicked people. Then God spoke to Jonah and said, Who are you to tell me what to do? Did I not make those people just like I made this plant? Then Jonah knew the lesson God wanted him to learn. He fell on his knees and started worshiping God. As he did this, he realized that God was a God of mercy and love. God wanted to teach Jonah that when people stopped sinning and obey him, he will forgive, protect, and bless them. God asked him to go to the city of Nineveh to give the people there a message. He didn't just make an F on that assignment. He ignored it altogether. After a major consequence involving a storm on a ship and getting swallowed by a big fish, God gave him a second chance. This time, he obeyed and earned that A. When God gives us a second chance, we need to go for it. Let me pray for us. God, thank you that you're a God of second chances and that you give us the opportunities to um, have fresh new starts. We pray that you would help us to remember that and take advantage of it and live a life that's pleasing to you. And everybody said, Amen. Well, we'll see you next time. Bye. Do you have a need for speed? Are you an adrenaline addict? Would driving a Formula One car at over 200 miles per hour still not be enough to get your heart racing? Then you've come to the right place. Because it's time for World Championship Sloth Racing! <coughs> not what you were expecting? Don't let their appearance fool you. When these sloths get on the racetrack, look out! You're in for the most intense two feet of racing you've ever seen. Let's meet our four competitors. First up is Larry McLightning. Now, everyone who thinks Larry is gonna win, stand up and shout as loud as you can. Next up we have Susie Swift. Everyone who thinks Susie is gonna win, stand up and shout as loud as you can. In the third starting spot is Bob Boomerang. If you think Bob is gonna win, stand up and shout as loud as you can! In our final spot is Frankie Too Fast. If you think Frankie is gonna win, stand up and shout as loud as you can! All right, our sloths are ready to race. Don't forget to cheer as loud as you can for your sloth. We're gonna start in three, two, one! And they're off! Frankie is battling for position. They're giving it all they've got today. Oh, I'm afraid to blink. It's total chaos. Oh, Larry makes a move. Look out. Oh, my. 
die. Oh, no. This is a record-setting pace. Susie almost wiped the out. The speed is unreal. They're neck and neck. Oh, it's definitely too close to call. What a great move. What is Bob thinking? It's definitely too close to call. Frankie is battling for position. They're giving it all they've got today. Whoa, I'm afraid to blink. It's total chaos. Larry makes a move. Look out. Oh, my. Oh, no. This is a record-setting pace. Susie almost wiped out. The speed is unreal. They're neck and neck. It's definitely too close to call. What a great move. What is Bob thinking? Oh, it's definitely too close to call. Oh, Larry makes a move. Look out. Wow. Larry McLightning wins a photo finish. Congrats to all you Larry fans out there. Whew. I don't know about you folks, but I was on the edge of my seat that entire race. Be sure to join us next time for more Sloth Racing Action.